So my disability is visual impairment due to diabetic retinopathy that was caused from uncontrolled diabetes and it attacked the retinas of my eyeballs causing them to detach. It's left my left eye completely blind with my right eye with about two to five percent of vision. Um, so I am completely deaf. I have two cochlear implants, so I cannot hear without, without them. The way it impacts me and my learning at Georgia Highland is it does not allow me to complete my work at Georgia Highland is the traditional way of just using my vision to read books or hand out or take notes. I have to have my books digitally formatted as well as any handouts that needs to be read. Not all disabilities can be seen. Um, you know, when I meet people for the first time, they tell me they don't know I'm deaf until I tell them. Um, so like, I just want, I guess, like the faculty to understand that um, not every student in their classroom, even though they may not know, that doesn't mean they may have a student that does have a disability. Um, so like with accessibility, just go ahead and have, I guess, closed captioning, because I've also met regular hearing people that do like having those closed captionings. What I have noticed with our students is that they are a little bit intimidated by sharing that information, even with the trusted person like a professor. But once I generally reach out, they are very reciprocal. And in that idea of reciprocity, I think I'm able to better identify. And I have gone beyond the measures of the basics of accommodation to whatever extends that might be. For example, I had hearing impaired students in a communication class, visually impaired students in a communication class, and thinking about what those challenges are in addition to the prospect of giving a presentation in front of their peers. GHC staff can do some things like making sure that the documents that they create and put on their website are um, accessible, have gone through the accessibility training, that's one really important thing that I think that um, the CEDL is doing is putting on the accessibility training when you learn things about accessibility and how to make documents, make websites, um, you know, just anything that a student might need. Universal Design is building your course from the ground up with accessibility in mind so that everyone has access to your course, not just your general student. Uh, and it's been shown that this actually helps every student because you'll have those who commute who can now listen to your lectures or those who are sitting in the student center and it's really loud and they can't hear your lecture so they're now just reading the captions or reading the transcripts. Many students with disabilities do not self-identify and so we often can't see the beneficial impacts of accessible courses when everything is working for the student through preemptive design. So in truth, I've never had a student thank me or compliment the accessible nature of an online course, but neither have had a student request that I caption a video or an image or convert text to audio. So I can't honestly say that I have firsthand evidence of preemptive accessibility work. But my observations are that preemptive design will build rapport and trust between the instructor and all students from the beginning and it can also save time in any last minute scrambling if a disabled student requires assistance. Accessibility to me is it's an um, equal platform. It, it takes what was originally unreachable and make it reachable for the individual who's dealing with the disability that needs accessibility. Well, accessibility is access, right? I think that it should matter to everyone, particularly in the day and age of education. I feel like it's important that students have resources that help them attain their goals, particularly when it comes to completing the course. Well, the most positive that I can think about is it allows me to do a lot of things I used to be able to do when I had my vision that I took for granted. And I'm not just talking about school, but I'm also talking about 
outside of school, um, there are a lot of sports that I am able to play. Um, after I had to hang up my cleats when I started losing my vision. So I'm definitely glad that um, a lot of people are working towards making a lot of things more accessible. There's so many people with multiple disabilities. You know, some are hidden, some are noticeable. Like accessibility, like it needs to be everywhere, like all inclusive. I make my course accessible step by step. So when I'm building out the course, I'm thinking about the content module that's being communicated and what types of things would need to be provided to make it more accessible to students. I also partner a lot with publisher platforms that provide a lot of resources as well. And those resources have been easy to integrate into our D2L platform. And so honestly, it hasn't been that much of a challenge to do it as you build the course. I would really like most people to understand that accessibility is really important because accessibility means inclusion and inclusion is very important for our students. If we include everyone, then they are going to feel included, feel that inclusion, and they're going to be successful. They're going to end up graduating and going on to graduate and complete their academic goals. So really, it's all about inclusion. The one most thing I think I would want people to know about accessibility is that it's a second chance for a lot of people and then for those who need it at the start of life. It's, uh, again, it's an even playing field. Um, they won't have to go through life loss or wondering about what if. Mm -hmm.